He works in a tiny shop near the quayside of Plymouth. He's Robert Lenkovich, a portrait painter by trade. In the summer, the tourists queue up for a two-minute session with Robert to have their faces immortalised for only a quid a time. Yet how few of them realise what this man has achieved? He's helped to bring hope to some of the city's forgotten men. He's improved the livelihood of many who rely on the tourist trade. This is how the public sees him. He calls it his labouring work. It's how he makes enough money to live. Robert Lenkovich is 32. He was an unknown artist a year ago. But then he finished a painting which has put this part of Plymouth on the artistic map. In short, he changed the face of the dockland. Visitors walk into the Barbican, a hodgepodge of warehouses, quaysides, stores, ships, chandelers and curio shops. You pass through the archway beneath a block of council flats and there facing you in a blaze of colour is Robert's greatest work. The eyes are blasted by a 3,000 square foot mural painted onto a furniture warehouse. Last summer, about 15,000 tourists came here every week to marvel at what Robert had created from the top of a ladder. Its theme is Elizabethan philosophy, but its size attracted the crowds, and very few of them realised that the mural hid some secrets. There's the artist below with a begging bowl, a reminder, perhaps, that he painted the mural for nothing. Children from the council flats opposite pose for some of the characters. But take a close look at this face. To Robert, it's the most important one in the mural. It belongs to Ted, a vagrant, a down-and-out, a dosser, a tramp, call him what you like. Ted is nicknamed Diogenes after a Greek philosopher who lived in a barrel. He lives in a barrel too, but because of Robert, this dirty, matted face is known in homes in the four corners of the world. Robert's painted him well over a hundred times, and the portraits have been sold to tourists from America, Australia, and all over Europe. Over the past few years, Robert has tried to help men like Diogenes. He put them up in his house, fed them, gave them money, and tried to encourage the local authority to provide them with a permanent hostel. The corporation took little constructive action at first, for Plymouth does not have a big dosser problem. In the city and surrounding countryside, there are perhaps only about 60 men living rough like this. But apart from helping them, Robert also came up here into the woods above a rubbish tip where Diogenes lives in his barrel, and the artist began to capture his way of life on canvas. Robert built up a remarkable set of pictures. He painted Diogenes' Dossa friends as well, who sometimes shared the home in a barrel. The paintings lived with the pathos the artists felt for their plight. Robert exhibited his paintings, the first Dossa collection in the country, and thousands flocked to see them. Over 200 paintings of Plymouth tramps were sold, mainly to tourists, and the city of Plymouth was embarrassed. Plymouth, home of Drake, the Pilgrim Fathers and Mayflower, was used to selling a different tourist image to this. The paintings reveal that the tramps were occupants of the city, only the city hadn't seen them. Robert pushed them into people's minds, and the city acted. It was decided by the corporation to provide some accommodation for the men. Vacancy as such in Plymouth is not a serious problem. It's precisely because it isn't a serious problem that it's resolvable. It's not like um, Liverpool, or Leeds, Manchester, or London. So you believe that something could be done about it? Oh, very easily. Very easily, locally. And it would hardly cost any money at all. This is the irony. 
Now, before your exhibition, before you started painting vagrants and drawing public attention towards them, what was the attitude, do you think, of, of Plymouth as a city towards them? I think much the same as anyone else. If they were agreeable, if they didn't bring up over one's shoes, um, if they weren't in the way, if they didn't um, do all the things they were suspected of doing, you know, molesting people and generally making a nuisance and a mess of themselves, if they didn't do that, then they were treated as colourful curios, as um, entertainment items from a distance. Quite normal. You believe they needed help? I think that what they did need was a roof over their head and food. I wouldn't like to define help any further than that. What was the attitude of the authorities when a wider audience began to realise the particular situation of the people you were painting? I think, first of all, they might have felt that it would blow over, that it was a dilettante interfering in the social services area, and that um, it would pass. That's number one. Number two, I think that some of them probably would feel that there was a genuine need, but there's the basic problem of money, and the basic problem that it doesn't make sense from the point of view of the average rate payer, which they represent, it does not make sense to put money into a project which will not make money. It doesn't make sense to, if you like, fill a bottomless pit. Diogenes has changed, of course, since Robert made him famous locally. He's now a colourful character instead of just a tramp. He's someone to chat up and remember. He still enjoys his barrel, but his escape from the twilight world in which he once lived. He suddenly feels important for the first time since he abandoned work, his family, and turned his back on society nearly 30 years ago. How long do you live here for, Diogenes? Uh, for eight years and ten months. Why? Well, because I like it. What do you like about it? Well, fresh air. You get plenty of that all right, don't you? Yeah. Long, long as old Wilson don't nationalise it. <laughs> what, Mr Wilson nationalise it? Yeah, as long as he don't na nationalise fresh air, it'll be all right. Some yeah. people say that now, because of Robert's paintings, that you're the most famous tramp in the country. Oh, uh, oh he talked about that then. I uh, have people coming for me from Australia, New Zealand, the States, everywhere. I think you privately like it, don't you? Being a bit famous now. Yeah, I do like it. Why? Why do you like it? Well, you've got somebody tougher then, haven't you? It's a simple story of the artist and the tramp, and both men are friends today. Robert is still painting Diogenes, for he says there is so much character inside that battered face. As an artist, of course, he's better known now and plans a new exhibition on a different theme. He's also still painting murals and plans to paint a wall three times larger than the one at the Barbican. But it is what he did for Diogenes and men like him that will be perhaps a bigger epitaph to his skill than even a work of art like this. There is a concrete end product of Robert Lenkovich's work and his paintings. And that's it in Hobart Street. That uh, rather derelict, battered building has been earmarked by Plymouth Corporation for use as a dosser's hostel. It'll never be very flash, just provide the basic essentials, a roof over their heads, a little warmth, a little shelter, a little food, and the corporation will need a government grant to get the project off the ground. But the whole venture is proof of how an artist can prick the conscience of a city. How Robert Lenkovich's affinity with the dossers, the down and outs, with the forgotten men of our cities, can be translated into action simply because he's decided to use the genius at his fingertips.